Hello ladies, gents and people of any other gender identities. I'm Sai Weapon and although video tutorials aren't really my thing, I'd like to introduce you to this great piece of software known as Graphics 2, since apparently there are between zero and no tutorials on it on the internet. Graphics 2 is an image manipulation program geared towards indexed many color image formats, such as pixel art and any sort of art that follows the restrictions of arcane computers of bygone times. It's free, it's open source, it's powerful, it's light, it's available on more platforms that you can shake a stick at. It's a spiritual successor to digital painting programs for the Amiga era, such as Deluxe Paint and Brilliance, which I haven't had the pleasure of meeting in person, but Judging by the looks of the kid, the parents must have been hot as fuck. The strong Amiga influences are the reason why it has such an uncommon interface for today's standards, which turns out to be the greatest stumbling block for potential new users. And that's the reason why I'm here droning your ears off, to explain you the basics of graphics to interface and save you a failed sanity check the first time you fire the program up. I'm, cover to po I'm going to cover six points, and those are zero, the existence of modes, one, the toolbar, two, mouse click uses, three, keep in the instant help, four, screen size dialog, and five, the spare page. Page 2 of the screen, yay! Point 0. The two different modes. <coughs> Graphics 2 has two main modes, animation mode and layers mode. We're going to forget about animation mode for now and everything is going to apply to layer mode. Layer mode is also the default static pick edition mode because nobody is forcing you to use layers. In fact, we aren't going to use them. Mm, Graphics 2 makes layers available within indexed color restrictions uh, by using the animated GIF format in a non-standard way. That way it doesn't even need a proprietary form file format to allow you to use layers. Point one, the toolbar. Everything you can see down here is the toolbar and everything can be accessed from there. The lures look like crap because Bandicam hogs my computer. The toolbar has four subsections. which are the drawing tools, edition tools, settings, and the palette proper. Within drawing tools you have the usual stuff, uh, selecting a brush, freehand painting, lines, rectangles, polylines, spray, float fill, Within edit tools, you have uh, copying and passing tools, which also work for setting brushes, special effects, effects for the brushes, text insertion, the zoom, the color picker. Within settings, you have the screen resolution options, the spare page, global settings, saving and loading, clearing the page, help, undo, kill the current page, quit the program and within the palette you have the palette proper and the palette minor. Forget about that for now. In graphics 2 you always be using both mouse buttons everywhere. Within the drawing area using the left mouse button draws with the foreground color which is what I've been doing the whole time and using the left 
the right mouse button paints with a background color which is usually used for erasing but you can also use to paint with whatever other color which by the way are selected from the palette using those same buttons if you select one color with the left button it be it will be selected as a foreground color and if you select it with the right button it will be selected as a background color pretty easy holding the control key switches between the two the third important mouse use is the mouse wheel which will let you access directly the zoom function function if you click on your mouse wheel or equivalent organ you'll activate or deactivate the zoom feature and if you roll it you'll change the zoom amount point three key bindings and help all key bindings in graphics tool can be reconfigured you should learn you should learn what they already are or you should remap them uh, to whatever you like because it will really speed up your workflow it, the help and key binding screen can be accessed by hitting F1 or clicking in this interrogation icon and help and now we have here all the shortcuts the program uses also if you hit F1 over any particular interface item you'll bring up a really helpful contextual help all the uh, all the shortcuts displayed are both interactive and dynamic that means every time you see a keystroke display like this you can click on it and you can really find it on the spot and uh, it will always display whatever you have said it as I just broke my key bindings but it's okay as you can see I have set uh, WASD for movement just like it was a shooter because it, let, it lets me use my left hand uh, much more com much more comfortably uh, probably the first thing you'll be doing when you start with a new workpiece is setting the resolution to something comfortable that's done with this button which can also be accessed with the enter key and you can set it you can set the uh, image resolution you want here and everything else opens a time portal to the 90s and demons power forth so you shouldn't really use them yet Wah! oh I changed the resolution <laughs> I accidentally did what I said you shouldn't be doing it's an easy fix oh but no demons came forth what disappointment the other feature I'm going to talk to you about now within the 10 minutes that Bandicam free allows me is the spare page graphics actually loads up to a total of two files at once which is really useful for editing two files at once or to do some special um, operations like copying your current file to the other one or switching the palette that's all folks at least for now time and motivation Halloween I'll make colorless basic tutorials until then you're on your own